Grief is like a desert mirage. It paints the world differently, luring even the best towards danger. Zaira wanted nothing other than to leave everything behind, hiding among the wandering caravan city of Anramash. Struggling with her pain of loss and blossoming jinn powers under the tutelage of the fabled Nazrik, her new life comes to a sudden change with the arrival of yet another jinn. Harboring this new fugitive brings them face to face against enemies both old and new. Hain, as Ayr's childhood friend, is only one of the many dangers hunting them, and all pale compared to the leader of the fanatical Court of Fire. Meanwhile, the palace of Shaviz is in uproar after the appearance of a crippled Magi girl. Sephar, brother to the prince, is tasked with looking after the murderous magician, using the girl's wits to uncover secrets left behind by a civilization more ancient than the Old Garden. Following the trail of the mysterious forebears, Sephar discovers troubling details about both his quest and his passionless assistant. As their lives converge, sparking a heated turn of events, old wounds need to close and grudges be forgotten, lest the whole world be timbered to the flames. The adventure continues in the magical desert of Seiran, with more secrets, dead deadlier plots, and even more on the line. Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Heir's Lair. I am your host, Jonathan Taylor. In today's video, I am fulfilling a promise I made to a uh, writing couple, more specifically the writing couple of Dar and Lori uh, Cardinal, with a look into the second book in their Spirits of Seiran series, Caravan of Fire. The TLDW for this review is... This book is as interesting and uh, compelling to read as the first one, um, as the first one was. It is a bit less focused than the first one, I do have to say so myself, and it does contain uh, one instance of a uh, trope that I have, to be honest, uh, kind of grown to dislike. But it uh, manages to take all of its elements and uh, present them in some quite interesting and quite eye-catching ways that are bound to uh, keep a reader's attention, particularly if they are interested in the kinds of topics that this book already, uh, you know, already discusses. So yeah, with that out of the way, it's time I, uh, uh, now that I've gotten the uh, broad sketches out, it's time I painted between the lines a little bit. The story of this book takes place a few years after the ending of the uh, last one, uh, Shackles, to, uh, Shackles to the Storm, and it follows two uh, main plot, line, plot lines. I can't talk anymore, I swear. Uh, anyway. The first of these plot lines sees returning main character Zaira, who, after having fled the city of, Ker of Keloran, where Shackles of the Storm took place, um, finds, uh, finds herself as the apprentice of uh, Nazrik, who is another, who, just like her, is an, uh, uh, is an earthbound djinn. However, he has a little bit more uh, wisdom and life experience uh, to him, and he actually shows her how she can best hone her um, her abilities as a djinn. They have a they have a pretty cozy deal going on until until a uh, third earthbound djinn uh, uh, comes into uh, comes into contact with them. An earthbound jinn who has taken on the appearance of uh, the son of the deceased son of Kalaran's newest prince, and he is hunted both for the um, <laughs> both for his uh, connections to uh, this world and for and for his supernatural uh, abilities and uh, and connections. The second of these of this book's plot lines follows. Uh, was his name? Sefar. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted, but I still want to get this review out. Anyway, uh, Sefar is the most um, is the most powerful uh, magi or human magic user magician uh, within the setting, and he set and he sets out to discover um, to discover or to learn uh, some uh, something about the about a. Uh, civiliz the civilization that previously lived within this uh, uh, within this world setting, aiding him aiding him on his uh, journey is uh, returning uh, secondary character Chai, 
whose um, experiment-driven bold curiosity allows him to make substantial headway within, uh, uh, within his uh, research. These two plot lines inevitably converge, and when they converge, they in many ways change the uh, uh, power dynamics of the, uh, of the entire book series. In much fewer words, I think it's safe to say that this book is the uh, shit hits the fan uh, book of the series, where the main characters realize not just exactly who it is that they are uh, dealing with, but also, also the magnitude of the uh, of the threat they have to uh, of the threat they have to overcome. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a very welcome in general. But in this case in particular, I'm not sure if that aspect has really been uh, has really been fleshed out as well as it uh, could have been. The plot in the and by that I mean the uh, the the ending to the plot, the climax, is uh, occurs a little bit uh, occurs a little bit uh, is a little bit sudden. It escalates too far too quickly. You you could argue that you could argue that this uh, that this book is kind of told on a, a sliding time scale, so it's likely that some of the build up has occurred. Um, in the parts that in the parts that weren't uh, explored, but that but that really only avoids the question, namely why hasn't the namely why hasn't the uh, uh, escalation of the plot been uh, been actually explored first of all, for example. Uh, the, another thing I have to I have to say is that the resolution, uh, while while interesting and compelling as it was, still comes across as a little too uh, convenient. Like it's like like it's quite obviously you know, looking back on it, it, it quite obviously led to uh, one specific outcome that the uh, authors intended to, and it doesn't really and that and that specific outcome doesn't really result from the prerequisites they uh, put in place. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately that and unfortunately that narrative strain does uh, does kind of shine through and not in a and not in a good way. Even even aside from that, uh, the plot does have the issue of being. Uh, lopsided, with most of the uh, with, with a lot of the most interesting aspects of this book being concentrated within uh, Sefar's storyline, whereas Zaira and uh, her uh, side of the cast really don't have a lot to do other than uh, bond and uh, contemplate their future. To be fair, to be fair, there is a uh, there is a lot of in there are there are lots of interesting. Uh, uh, pieces of information that are revealed within uh, Zaira's uh, segments of the book. And, and both character information and character development, e even subtle, uh, occurs throughout, you know, occurs throughout these, uh, uh, these parts of the book, but not necessarily in a, in a compelling or enlightening way. So if you're not, if you're not interested by the characters around Zaira by the 100th page, I can really say that uh, you'll like them by the 300th page. The biggest missed opportunity, however, when it, in terms of uh, when it comes to this book, is the fact that it uh, puts a spotlight on perhaps the most interesting aspect of this setting, namely the uh, caravan city of Anramash, and it absolutely does not know what to do with it. Like it would have been interesting to find out a little bit more about how exactly this city, uh, how exactly the city operates, whether or not there are any uh, rules by which uh, newcomers are supposed to abide. Uh, how it how it is that these rules uh, have uh, uh, have been decided. What it is that motivates them. What draws uh, what draws newcomers to uh, Anramash. What draws them to you know what draws them to stay there. How does it how how does it all work? It is left disappointingly uh, is disappointingly thin. Everything about everything about this city is left disappointingly thin. One could argue that it, that that is in order to maintain its uh, mystique, but that that explanation doesn't really work either because there are some pragmatic aspects uh, uh, discussed there. Not not a lot. But uh, but enough to where you to where you as a reader would want to know more, and this book does not deliver more, not not in terms of the uh, not in terms of Anramash. Other aspects of the setting, thankfully, receive a little bit more um, exploration. Uh, the first thing, the first uh, of these 
uh, facets of the world that uh, gets explored that I will mention is the uh, world of diplomacy. And that, and that we see how Sefar's uh, uh, brother, uh, Prince Idranil, uh, negotiates all the situations where, uh, within which he finds himself. And also in terms of how uh, Sefar himself has to interact with various uh, uh, with various other parties in order to make sure that he, in order to uh, in order to advance within his uh, main task. And speaking of his main task, I think that is really the uh, uh, best written part of the book. Not necessarily in terms of the uh, revelations themselves, though they are uh, in, interesting enough uh, as well, but more in terms of how uh, of how, it, how exactly the uh, him and uh, him and Chai uh, arrive at their uh, realizations, and how exactly their and, and how exactly their uh, approaches uh, contrast each other. So that uh, so exploring that really was the uh, highlight of the book for me, and also all of the descriptions of the places where they uh, have to go and what is expected of them in uh, all of these uh, various locations, what it is and what it is that they find. All of that. Um, well, that really helps uh, elevate the, uh, you know, the material present here, and I, and I can very much say that I, uh, you know, that I've enjoyed it. Overall, while I am disappointed by uh, how this book wastes some of its potential, in various other aspects, it is written, um, in a it is written in a very uh, captivating way that manages to. Uh, to bring the reader into its atmosphere quite well. My final rating for Caravan of Fire is a 3 out of 5. And that was my review, thank you for your attention. If you enjoyed it, well then please leave a like, maybe even share this video wherever you think other people will uh, like it as well. If there is anything you'd like to um, uh, add to the video, either to the review or to the uh, book itself, that's what the comment section is for. And if you want to see when my uh, next video gets released, well then please subscribe. And ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you or keep you notified. My own book, Heir to the Empire of the Next Generation, is available at most major book retailers under a master link in the uh, description down below. Right past my social media links, which I also suggest you check out, should you choose to. <clears throat> if you do, you'll also find my Patreon listed down there. Uh, just in case you want to support me more directly, and maybe also receive perks such as early access to uh, videos and scripts, both for uh, both for this channel and for my second one. Until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been the Heirs Layer. <laughs>